and I can cut, extract, or delete Ripple, and it does an actual Ripple edit right there. With all the talk about AI, I thought this would be a cool opportunity to really just showcase and highlight the AI that exists in Premiere Pro today. Text-based editing, that you bring video now into Premiere Pro, if this all works within the text panel, this is where you'll find the transcription and captioning functions here in the window menu. It's going to go through and transcribe. We now support 17 languages we also have the ability to, of course, identify different speakers. Play a little bit of this back. You can take your time, there's no rush. Am I like not supposed to look into the camera though? Edit speaker name and save. And then this just makes kind of finding your content a little bit easier. Sometimes it gets a little tripped up. What is your name and what do you do? Names for the island. Names for the island. We have to make a correction there. For instance, I can just start by selecting this section here where he intros himself, hit the comma key, or insert into this fuzzy edit sequence and it edits that part in and insert that. And we can start building up this timeline. This little section right here might be a cool opportunity to get rid of that long pause. And obviously there would be a jump cut there. So we'd either obscure it with some B-roll that it detects all of that. It makes it very easy for us to cut that out. So if we go into edit the pause length, we go into set pause length, the default is 0.75 seconds. And you'll see that as I adjust this, dynamically. A lot of those little things, they go away. You can see the text shifting in the panel there. Once we have our edit, you still have all the same tools. If we want to slip, slide, or ripple, or do anything, we can do all of that. It doesn't change the way you edit. If there were a pause in the middle of something, maybe we want to get rid of this little section. So you'll notice if I select that ellipsis right there, it actually creates an in and out point on my timeline, and I can cut, extract, or delete ripple, and it does an actual ripple edit right there. Listen to Pandora and I think it was Big Spider Beck. So that's a really nice clean edit. We can say cut. Maybe I want to put this section here. I want to paste this up here and I can reorder my edits via script. Once you've done all of that, you have the ability to generate your captions. So I just like to show this creating captions have all of your various captioning formats, your minimum length, duration, if you want single or double line captions. If you have a style built in, you can do that. And you can even do sort of, you know, faux all caps. It's a little bit easier to read. You can change position and all of that. We can increase the size. We can do the edits right here names for the island, scene edit detection. You're trying to pull selects for a reel or you know you have a series of edits. And again, maybe you're trying to pull specific scenes, automatically see where those edits happened, detect them, and then create the cut for you. Right click, control click, and I choose scene edit detection. It's going to pull up this little dialogue. Let's do all three. If we look in my project panel, you'll see that it's created sub clips of all those little pieces. It makes it very easy for me now to create my own selects. And down in the timeline, again, a little more manually, if I just use my shift arrow, I can very quickly go between all the different cutscenes. Color matching. Here on the left, I have my sort of reference. And here on the right, I have what I want match this to that. Uncheck face detection here. And then I'm simply going to choose apply match. It's not bad. It basically gave us a little bit more sort of shadow contrast. If you look at the light here and the color, the sort of the tone here and the tones here, they're more similar than they were. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.